Welcome everyone and thank you for tuning in to hear my trading and market updates. This is Uncle Frank and I'm not a financial advisor, nor is any of the content to be construed as financial advice. This channel is for entertainment purposes only. Please remember to hit the like button if you enjoyed the presentation and be sure to subscribe to the channel so you're alerted when I have new information to share. So now let's get into the latest updates. Hey, welcome back everyone. Before we get into what happened today, let's recap December with this message I got from Ortex. For the second month running, short sellers recorded losses as stocks closed out 2023 strong. In the aggregate, the bears lost $32.5 billion in December. Good news for us, right? So let's drill down a little and examine the biggest burn on the short sellers. Taking the top spot as the biggest loser for short sellers in December is Advanced Micro Devices or AMD as bears lost $1.18 billion in the stock in December. So why did they lose, Uncle Frank? Do you remember my last video where I pointed out that artificial intelligence is actually a black swan for predatory short hedges. It not only kept the market from falling or correcting last year, but also provided a big rally burning the shorts. Let's read on. On December 6th, AMD launched its Instinct MI300 accelerators and processors for data centers. Those systems for high-performance computing and AI applications will compete with NVIDIA's H100 series devices. AMD also introduced its latest mobile PC processors, the Ryzen 8040 series. The chips are designed for a new class of personal computers called AI PCs coming in 2024. These launches are only expected to help AMD continue taking market share from its competitors, buoying the share price. AMD also estimated the potential market for its data center AI chips could reach $45 billion this year, sending the share price higher. A number of analysts gave positive reinforcement for the stock in December, including Goldman Sachs analyst Tohi Shahari, who maintained a buy rating and raised the price target from 137 to 157 on AMD. Ortex data shows short interest now stands at $7.7 billion, up nearly 57% from last month. You see, guys... AI is actually a white swan for us. It rallied, okay, the techs, especially the Magnificent 7, and it's burning the shorts. So let's get Bloomberg's take on today's action from the close. The first trading day of the new year brought 2023's scorching rally to a halt after a more than $8 trillion surge in the S&P 500 last year. Okay, I have to pause here. Guys, after you have an $8 trillion surge, you know, a pause, even a pullback is a good thing. Okay, U.S. stocks and bonds dropped as traders trim rate cut bets, hitting big tech the hardest. The tech-heavy NASDAQ 100 index slid 1.7%, its biggest dip since October. Apple fell after a downgrade. Oppenheimer said stocks are likely to take a breather, but gains may resume in the next earnings season. And then more of the same from the evening briefing. Traders hoping that a wide-ranging year-end rally would pick up where it left off got a rude surprise Tuesday. Instead, they witnessed a market session that featured one of the worst ever concerted drops in stocks and bonds to start a year. But here's the important part. While first day performance says little about what markets will do for the rest of 2024, the synchronized retreat signaled at least some hesitation among investors to chase a fourth quarter rally that lifted both U.S. shares and long dated treasuries by more than 10 percent. OK, the most common concern or belief we have heard from investors is that overbought conditions and euphoric sentiment will set up for a reversal to start 2024 in both bond yields and stocks, said Dennis Bouchier, founder of 22V Research. The overbought conditions and sentiment readings are tough to argue with. Okay, so what I'm hearing is Wall Street wants a sell-off again. They want a correction. Bloomberg said it on the previous slide. We got a rude awakening today. The rally's been halted. 
Well, that may be true of one index here, but let's look at the entire market for ourselves and make our own determination. They're right. S&P 500 was down 27 points today. Guys, that's 0.57%. The Dow was up 25.5. Okay. NASDAQ, sure, it took a trimming down 245. That's 1.63%. But it's at 14,765. It has earned a breather. The Russell 2000 down 14.28. That's 0.70%. We know what happened today. NASDAQ has rough start to 2024 as Apple slips. Apple falls as Barclays warns on iPhone weakness. And from Fortune, what's behind Apple's $100 billion market cap loss today? A major downgrade that has investors worried about slowing iPhone sales is the key culprit. Yeah, this company needs to buy AMC. That's what they need to do. But let's dig down a little deeper. After surging roughly 50%, to a record high in 2023, a rare rating downgrade from Wall Street helped push Apple stock down 3.65% on Tuesday, shaving over $100 billion from the tech giant's market cap. Okay, pause. Did you hear what I said, guys? After surging 50% in one year to a record high, right, the stock is down 3.65%. Okay, Barclays analyst Tim Long tagged Apple with an under, underweight rating due to weak iPhone demand Tuesday morning, arguing its shares could sink roughly 13% to $160 over the next 12 months. You know what, guys? That might be entirely true. But what I'm trying to point out is look at the timing, right? First day of trading, right out of the gate, a downgrade, a very rare thing for Apple right out of the gate and they wanted to ha hit tech and they want to hit the biggest of tech and they did okay good morning guys i've resumed recording on wednesday morning it's around 6 30 a.m central here in chicago and what a difference a day makes the narrative from yesterday seems to be working for wall street Futures on all major indices are in the red. Apple is down another 97 cents or 0.52%. And the headlines have changed to this now. U.S. futures slip. Bond yields rise as rate cut bets cool. The risk of an over-promising and under-delivering Fed. There's a possibility that Jerome Powell and the Fed will push back on their rate cuts and readjust the projections back to higher for longer. Interesting. Maybe it's all in my head. You know what, guys? A part of me thought that AMC Investor Relations might celebrate the U.S. box office defying the odds by clearing $9 billion in a year where we suffered both a writer's and actor's strike. Instead, we swap more stock for debt at less than 10 cents on the dollar, in my opinion, with one of our former short sellers, no less. Hey, thanks for the release, John Merriweather. And here's an interesting article on one of our competitors, Miriam, to discuss Cinemark's plan transforming movie theater into gamescape. Okay, good. This could mean they're all done. Uncle Frank, that's mean of you. Yeah, I forget you guys don't know me that well. I fight fair, but I fight to win. I want Cinemark and Cineworld gone. I want AMC to fall ass backwards into being a legal monopoly, the only big theater chain left. With the advent of streaming, we may not need as many theaters out there, and I want theirs to close instead of ours. From the article, the company hopes to cut the number of movie screens inside the theater in half, from 20 to 10, including two XD screens. Cinemark also hopes to add in what's called Gamescape options. The additions consist of an arcade, bar and restaurant, bowling alley, and laser tag. Okay, there it is, laser tag. The last business you try before you board the joint up. This could mark the beginning of the end for old Cinemark. 
but don't feel too bad for them. Their stock is up 61% over the past year, while ours is down 83%. I wanted to mark the new year by revisiting this article from one year ago, published by the Skidmark of Wall Street, Seeking Alpha, titled AMC Entertainment, unlikely to survive 2023, even if movie ticket sales fully recover by Harry Schwartz. Nice name. Hey, Harry, can we get a retraction on this now? Who paid you to write this masterpiece, Harry? May the Schwartz be with you, dickhead. Okay, I'm going to cover this article for you guys, but I warn you, go get an air sickness bag or something else to barf in from MoneyWise. The cost of that goes way up. Goldman Sachs CEO slams proposal to force banks to hold billions more in capital, argues it'll be regular Americans left to shoulder the friction and cost. He's, he's worried about us. He's looking out for the regular American guys. The CEO of one of America's largest banks is slamming a proposal he says could inadvertently harm America's retirement savings. See, this guy, Kenny Griffin, they're always looking out for the teacher's pensions and for your 401k. David Solomon, the head honcho at Goldman Sachs, has joined a chorus of banking execs criticizing U.S. bank regulators' plan to require large banks to raise the capital on their books by 16% in order to guard against risks like bank insolvency. The ambitious reforms were proposed in July after the sudden collapse of three high-profile regional banks in the spring. But there's been pushback from banking leaders ever since. The additional 16% capital requirement proposed by a trio of regulators, the Fed Reserve, the FDIC, and the Office of the Comptroller of the Currency could force banks to trim services, raise fees or both, according to Solomon. You guys are closing banks left and right. Speaking at the Financial Times Banking Conference in London, just before the November 30th deadline to comment on the proposed rules, the Goldman exec said, I don't think you're materially changing the safety and soundness in the way that matters compared to the friction and cost. Solomon worries that mandating banks to keep a higher percentage of assets liquid will impact pension managers' abilities to lend out their securities. Okay, now we're getting to the heart of the matter, aren't we? Securities lending, which AMC investors know all about, is a common source of extra income for pension funds. Not Wall Street, pension funds. Remember when AMC was getting a 1,000% cost to borrow? Yeah, these guys were sharing it all with the teachers. Yeah, by lending out their securities, funds can earn fees and potentially grow their investment returns, which is a boon for retirement savers. If banks can't participate in as much securities lending, Due to the regulatory requirement to hold more liquid assets like cash, pension funds could suffer a drop in returns. Okay, hang on to that thought. Now stay with me guys, keep the previous article in mind. The banks don't want to meet any new capital requirements. It's going to hurt the pension funds. Okay, now let's review this article from back in September from a pension fund magazine no less. Title. Inside the $499 million lawsuit settlement exposing the opaque world of securities lending, right? Some of America's billion-dollar pension funds have agreed to a proposed settlement in a lawsuit against Wall Street banks in a long-running case that cracked open the hidden world of securities lending. In securities lending... Pension funds and retirement plans lend out their portfolio shares to hedge funds and other investors using Wall Street brokers that charge a fee, a cost-to-borrow fee. By some estimates, stock lending totals $1.75 trillion in market value. But the business was so tightly controlled that it effectively functioned as a cartel, according to the pension fund's class action lawsuit. Their partial settlement was filed in court 
August 23rd. The secrecy behind securities lending may be changing. The group of pension funds led by the $40.1 billion Iowa Public Employees Retirement System reached a $499 million partial settlement in the antitrust lawsuit, alleging that, get these names, Morgan Stanley, Goldman Sachs, UBS, J.P. Morgan Chase, Credit Suisse, and Bank of America ran a price-fixing scheme using their own joint venture called Equilend. Never heard of them? You should have if you're a subscriber to this channel. In effect, the banks hurt pension funds by keeping fees paid artificially low. They prevented asset owners from earning more revenues when they lent out stock, according to the complaint filed in the U.S. District in the Southern District of New York. You see, Goldman Sachs, the CEO, it's all he cares about, Kenny. All they care about are pension funds. Other pension funds that um, that are lead members of the class action suit include the $73.6 billion L.A. County Employees Retirement Association, Orange County Employees Retirement Systems, and the Sonoma County Employees Retirement Association. The proposed agreement could end up benefiting many investors far beyond the pension fund world. Now take a good look at your screen, guys. On the left, which companies make up Equilend, the unknown securities lending giant, the cartel, I'll tell you, Morgan Stanley, they lead our board of directors, Goldman Sachs, a short seller of AMC, a spoofer of AMC, oh, there's UBS, okay, now they've inherited all the credit suite short against AMC, JP Morgan Chase, you think they're not a short seller of AMC? Think again, they're 100% owner of Highbridge Capital, who is still short AMC. And there's Credit Suisse, shorter of AMC. The guys who had a 90 cent price target on us, their tits up taking on water, they're gone. And there's Bank of America, Kenny's prime broker. They were short AMC. Now, the popular AMC guys on Twitter and YouTube, you know, especially the pinheads that told us the reverse split's going to cause a MOASP, you know, because of the QSIP change. We're going to be so effing rich. Okay. They talk about the reverse repo market every day. Do you know why? Because they've been wrong about everything else. While it's a good idea to keep an eye on that because it can give you advance warning of a liquidity crisis. It's been around for like 11 years, guys. It's nothing new. Okay, it's like going to New York and saying, look, there's the Empire State Building. It is here. Listen, these guys couldn't find their ass if it had a bell on it. Before I get to the calendar and close, the point I'm trying to make is without the ape, our preferred share, its conversion and reverse split, we, we would have already had a short covering event, in my opinion. This entire scheme was designed in our own boardroom by City and signed off on by Adam and Phil from Morgan Stanley. It was made to order for Wall Street shorts. It was exactly what they needed, and Adam gave it to them. The people in our boardroom will never do anything intentionally to hurt the interests of Wall Street. Can you see that now? Remember before the split, there were like anywhere from 3,000 to 30,000 shares of AMC available to lend and short with a fee of about 1,000%. Now post-split, post-reverse split and conversion, as of this recording, there's 5.2 million shares available to borrow and lend and short, and at a rate of less than 1%. Do you see how that works, guys? We gave Wall Street exactly what they needed, a huge break. Anyway, I want my subscribers to know, you're not crazy. Meme stocks were up 25% by the close of 2023. Cinemark is up over 61% year over year. You're not crazy. Your stock is being wildly manipulated and controlled. They will continue to do this right up to the very second that they can't. They will never cover until they're forced to. And the only thing that can facilitate that will be a black or white swan event. This is not investment advice. I'm not an investment advisor. I'm not telling you to buy, sell, or hold any security, including AMC. What I am saying 
is the predatory short hedge funds. They are not going to cover, guys. They never had any intention of it, okay? They will only cover if there is a liquidity crisis in their leverage chain, something that will turn their prime brokers against them and create margin calls. That is the only path to any short covering event and or MOAS. It's just one man's opinion. Don't you guys think we should know a little more about Equilend? It's owned by B of A, Merrill Lynch, BlackRock, Credit Suisse, Goldman Sachs, JP Morgan, Morgan Stanley, National Bank of Canada, Northern Trust, State Street, and UBS. Turns out, they're for sale. Equilend Holdings, backed by some of the biggest Wall Street firms, has found a buyer for more than $800 million. Looks like Walsh, Carson, Anderson, and Stowe has won the auction to buy Equilend Holdings, according to four private equity and banking sources. I think we need to dig a little deeper, don't you? All right, guys, let's do a quick run through the calendar before the bell. All right, January 2nd, our first day in the market already behind us. Uh, we got final box office numbers in, over $9 billion, AMC completely silent on the matter. Uh, the effective date for Rule 13F-2, you know, that, that's already started. Any moment now, we can get the Epstein alleged victims and associate list. This time, I think Wall Street and Washington are going to be center stage, not just celebrities. Uh, we'll see U.S. job openings today, tomorrow, Thursday, ADP, employment, and initial jobless claims. Friday, this is huge, employment report and unemployment rate. Also, January 5th to 10th, that's the Bitcoin ETF approval window. Monday, consumer credit. And will this be the month that that huge Credit Suisse slash UBS swap finally expires? Stay tuned, I have no idea. January 9th, Tuesday, trade deficit. Also, that's going to be um, the uh, Consumer Electronics Show. I expect a lot of artificial intelligence stuff to come out of that convention. Next Thursday, initial jobless claims, CPI, core CPI, year over year. Friday, this is, this is hot. This is going to be a hot month, hot week. PPI, core PPI, that's January 12th. Also, we've got three potentially high-grossing movies dropping for that weekend. Mean Girls, The Beekeeper, and The Book of Clarence. Also, January 19th, did you know, that is the first government shutdown deadline date. That could be huge. Uh, will January be the month the national debt exceeds $34 trillion? We're knocking on that door. And by the way, before we get out of January, on the 29th, Monday, that's the Evergrande liquidation hearing. Guys, we are going to have a lot of banks due to this commercial real estate crisis turning, shifting from unrealized losses to realized losses. We're going to have to keep a close eye on that. Also in January, five countries are expected to join the BRICS. Got a lot of action coming up. Stay tuned. Hey, I want to thank you for watching and please remember to hit the like button after this slide if you enjoyed the presentation. Subscribe to the channel and set the alert so you're notified when I have new information to share. See you at the bell.